Hey, this is uh, video uh, 31, which is uh, the first of the three that I'm going to be making for analysis of a, a simple composite uh, structure in CATIA V5. Okay, now uh, this particular one is uh, uh, considering the three elements involved in the problem, namely the top face bottom face and the uh, honeycomb core all being as uh, as a type of a laminated composite okay so I'm not going to do anything special about uh, anything special about the, the honeycomb core I'm going to declare it as a uh, I, I will also declare it as a composite layer okay so it's, I'm going to do basically two analysis here. One is where the honeycomb core is is declared as being a honey, honey, uh, honeycomb structure, uh, and one the honeycomb core as being declared a part of the uh, composite layers. Okay, all right. So uh, let's. Uh, the first thing I want to do is uh, uh, create my materials because these are uh, special special type of material that I'm going to be using. Uh, they're not in the in the CATIA database, so let's go ahead and uh, do this thing. We have done it several times, so uh, start uh, infrastructure and uh, material library. Obviously, there's nothing there. So the first one is uh, the face, the faces, okay? So it's going to be, I'm going to call this thing uh, 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 top and bottom face. Faces, okay. Uh, so uh, this is the name of it uh, for uh, composite. We know that uh, based on uh, the drawing here uh, is uh, 0.7112 millimeter. Some of these numbers can be rounded, but I'll just use exactly the same thing that the reference took 0.7112 millimeter and unidirectional okay then uh, uh, we're going to go to analysis we declare this thing as a 2d orthotropic and the numbers uh, if you watch the video segment uh, the the one video segment 30 which discusses the problem statement uh, the material is given here and these are the things that you're going to input these numbers you're going to input uh, now, on this side, you don't have to input anything. We already did the thickness. We already inputted. And these numbers, the first uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we're going to input. Okay? So let me do that here for you. Uh, this first one is uh, 68947. 68947. It's MPA. Uh, the next one is 27579. Two seven five seven nine. Poisson ratio is zero point three. Uh, shear modulus in the x y direction is one two nine two eight one two nine two eight, and the same thing with the other the other two directions. One two nine two eight and one two nine to eight we are doing a static problem therefore we don't need the density and these are the strength properties that we don't care about so uh, apply and okay now when it comes to the core i'm going to define two materials one of them where i declared as a honeycomb core and the other one i declared just like i did here for the top and the bottom faces or skins as a 2d orthotropic so let's do the the honeycomb uh, let me do the 2d orthotropic first so it's going to be a new one over here double click change of it i'll say uh, uh, core honeycomb i'll call it like this core defined as 2D orthotropic. Also, also 
to talk. Okay, so uh, we say uh, apply, the name changed here. So we go to the composite, okay, for the thickness. Uh, I, I, although it doesn't matter, but I declare it as unidirectional. And the thickness of that was, see, the thickness of that is 19.05. Uh, 19 cube thickness, 19.05. Okay, this is what I'm doing here. Uh, my uh, uh, my uh, honeycomb has a thickness of 19.05. Okay. Okay, so uh, and then on the analysis, again 2D orthotropic. Okay, for 2D orthotropic, I will input the stuff as in appearing in the table. So this is going to be uh, longitudinal Young's modulus is going to be 0 0.069. Actually, the table that I have. Uh, right here, uh, 0 0.068948, 06, 0.068948, which is going to round it to, uh, well, it's going to display it like that. And for the, uh, for the E2, same thing, 0 0.069, can't remember what it was. Uh, six eight nine four eight six eight nine four eight six eight nine four eight. Okay, very weak in the directions one and two. In the uh, Poisson ratio is zero, Poisson ratio is zero. You can see that. And for shear in the one two plane, same thing as above uh, zero point oh six eight. Uh, can't remember again. Uh, uh, six eight nine four eight. Six eight nine four eight. Okay. Now for these two, on the other hand, I have a, a bigger number two o nine point six. So this is going to be two o nine point six. And for the for the shear in the YZ plane, I will be using uh, uh, 82.74. These are all megapascal. 82.74. 82.74. Okay. And then apply. And then we close it. Now I'm going to define another material, but this time I'm going to declare it core defined as honeycomb so double click core defined as honeycomb honeycomb okay apply so here's uh, defined like that uh, composite the thickness, cute thickness. Now, it really doesn't matter what you do here for honeycomb. Uh, for In fact, these things we don't care for the purpose of analysis, but I'm just not even going to declare it here. So, this was 19.05 millimeter. Okay. And for the analysis, you see there is a honeycomb material here. And the only thing you need is these three numbers. Just uh, Oh, there's some, uh, yeah, there's, there's these three numbers. And these three numbers, actually one of them, uh, one of them did not even appear when I declared it as a 2D orthotropic. And that is this E3 modulus. See that? I did not even need this thing when I did it as 2D uh, uh, orthotropic. But I need it now. So it's going to be 689476. 68 nine four seven six which is ten times ten times uh ten times uh, of uh, of of this value okay six eight nine four seven six 
and then uh, the other two are the shear modulus one of them was 209.6 and this one was 80, 82.74, 82.74, uh, right here, 82.74, okay, good, so we say apply, we say okay, there we are, let's just check these, make sure everything is okay, this was the skin, analysis, the numbers are there, this was the uh, the core defined as 2D orthotropic numbers are there and this was the core defined as a honeycomb the numbers are there the only reason i double check these is sometimes i've noticed that when you go and do the uh, katia run sometimes for whatever reason these will change to from orthotropic changes to isotropic and then uh, uh, the the uh, Composite designer will complain that material is not defined, etc. But that's okay. We are we are fine here. So I'm going to save this, save it in on my desktop, and I created a folder here. Uh, send, uh, let me see now. I did create a folder uh, with let me see video yeah video thirty. Right there, this is video 31 actually. Okay, so I'll call it uh, sandwich. Sandwich. Okay. Video. Thirty one. Okay, we have done this thing many times, but. Uh, Anyway, uh, for those people who may or may not have seen the earlier videos, at least I'm trying to show you everything from the scratch. Okay, now we're going to create our model. And our model is a very simple surface, uh, 250, 250, uh, uh, 54 millimeter by 254. So let's go ahead and start with, uh, start a part file. Okay. And uh, we're going to create a surface. So, so uh, on that plane, I will sketch a rectangle, 254 by 254. I'm not using symmetry, therefore, uh, it's the actual size. This is 254 millimeter by 254 millimeter. And then we're going to fill it, F-I-L-L. -L. And I'm going to join it. And I'm going to reverse the direction of the join. For the sole reason that I want the direction of my normal to the shell elements to always point up. This is just a habit, maybe a bad habit, I don't know. So then you create a, a rosette. So right there, coordinates axis system. Uh, it's automatically put at the at the global origin, but I want to shift it a little bit to the left so that the screen is not cluttered that much. So put the cursor there, right click, cre create a point, and then move your uh, Y coordinate. <clears throat> I'm moving it to the left, so it's going to put my coordinate system right there. And I'm going to uncheck this current so that this is not the current coordinate system, the global one is. Okay, save everything. File, save management, save as, and this is the right folder. Okay, now we're going to go to the composite uh, composite design workbench right there, composite design. First, you need to uh, define your composite parameters right there. Add the material. So I go to that uh, folder that I created. Do you remember that material database that I created, which was uh, uh, right there? Notice that there is three things here. Uh, one is for the top and the bottom faces, to the orthotropic, uh, core defined as to the orthotropic, and core defined as honeycomb. Uh, since I will be making two runs here. 
one where the top and the core are two diosotropic, and one with the the, the top being uh, two diosotropic, top and the bottom being uh, two diosotropic, and the core being honeycomb. I'm going to need all of these, so we just select the, all three of them using the shift, and they're all going to be there. Okay, so we say all right now rosette, uh, add a rosette. So this is my rosette. Say okay. And we, uh, this is a, the direction that we have is uh, zero. I'm assuming that these uh, top and the bottom faces have, are unidirectional. Okay, so there's a single, uh, single direction. But in the in the event that the top and the bottom faces are uh, have have a stacking sequence, then of course you have to have the right, the proper angles in here if they're not listed among these default values. But uh, I don't need it for because I'm assuming that the top and the bottom faces are zero, zero direction, uh, along the zero direction, and the core, of course, core being a honeycomb direction doesn't make sense. Okay, and even in the case of the case that I'm going to be modeling as two D orthotropic, uh, the the direction zero I'm going to be using for uh, simulation purposes. We say okay. Uh, let me hide this thing. All right. Uh, now, uh, we're going to create our uh, plies, okay? So, uh, I'll make a uh, group plies, okay? So, uh, I'm going to put all of them in the same uh, same group, same uh, group ply. So, the surface is right here. The draping direction, I have a habit of always being up, okay? So, I have, uh, I'm going to put all my three plies in here, okay? So, in my first run, I'm not going to use the honeycomb as, uh, you know, the, the material data that I've created. So, uh, all right, so let's see now. Uh, this is ply, supply number one. Uh, so for the, uh, the, the contour, I'm going to select that sketch right there. And the attribute, you know what, I'm going to change this, I'll call it ply one, okay, fine. But I'm going to call it... Uh, uh, to do it on this side, I'm not sure. Uh, so uh, top face, how about that? Uh, let's start. Yeah, top, top face. Actually, you know what? Let me call this thing bottom face. B O T, bottom face. That really doesn't matter as long as you're careful. Uh, so attributes. This is going to be uh, top or bottom face material. The, remember it was 2D orthotropic and direction is zero. Okay, already one is created here. You can see that. All right, another one in the same ply group. This one I'm going to call uh, core. This is uh, this is I'm going to call core. Uh, it was not a good idea to leave this thing. I'm going to change this thing to core as 2D core as 2D ortho, ortho. For the, the contour, it's going to be the same sketch right there. And for the attribute, it's not going to be this. It's going to be core defined as 2D orthotropic, okay, and direction is zero. All right. But the only thing I didn't, I don't like is this name. So let me re, re, rename this thing properties. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to change this thing uh, uh, top. Bottom, uh, bottom face to as 2D ortho. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So the only thing that's left is the top face. Okay. So another one in that ply group. Uh, so I'm going to call this thing uh, top. Face as 2D ortho. For the contour, I'm going to select the same sketch. And for the attribute, is it's uh, uh, it's a face bottom uh, it's a bottom face. So I'm going to select the proper material. Okay, direction is zero. Okay, so there is my third ply okay let's do the stacking uh, uh, stack exploder to see whether it makes sense uh, 
this is too big that's why it's off the screen it's right there you see that so let me uh, make this thing uh, maybe uh, 10 so what happens is that you have you should have uh, uh, because there are th three all having the same direction the it looks like there's two but there is uh, three of them so this is the bottom face and then the core which is 19 times bigger you can see the thicker and then there's the top face okay maybe that uh, looks better okay so there we are see okay cancel all right so this is done save everything uh, now we're going to go to uh, uh, now we're going to go to the uh, uh, the advanced version tool <clears throat> we're going to mesh this and uh, I want 10 elements this way 10 elements that way this was 154 divided by 10 is 25.4 millimeter we want quad, quad only we want parabolic and uh, that's uh, pretty much it so we say okay and mesh it mesh means that click on this guy to zap it right there and exit okay now we're going to go to our uh, uh, generative structure analysis well, let's import the material properties so you click uh, you click on import import 2d properties import uh, composite properties right right there let me move this thing here import composite properties you click on it we're going to the support is that surface the ply is that ply group one that we created in our tree up here right there so all three of them are going to all three plies are going to be taken and symmetrical means that uh, uh, you know basically put it symmetrical along that uh, surface so basically the bottom face is below the core is in the middle the top is the uh, top face is above in a symmetrical way that really doesn't matter for this problem at least that much <laughs> okay so uh, now we save our analysis file save management there's the analysis, uh, save as, uh, save as analysis, that's fine. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me, let me give this thing all modeled as uh, 2D ortho. Because I will be doing another one after this, where honeycomb is going to be, the core is going to be modeled as honeycomb, not as 2D ortho okay uh pretty good so uh we're gonna hide our stacking stacking here ha hide our sketch because later on i want to put restraints and things like that and those are going to be blocking my my view so uh why don't we clamp all three uh, all four edges so there's the clamp let me go one two three and four say okay all right and on this thing, I'm going to put a pressure. And the value of the pressure, if you if you recall, the value of the pressure was uh, right here, 0. 0.6894, something like that, 0. 0.6894 megapascal. You say okay. All right. Uh, I think we've got all the stuff that we need. We're going to run it. Now the deflection of this problem, uh, when you go to, to sort the, the reference that I'm using, which is right here, this reference, is 1.66 millimeter. That's their calculation with a different software. Okay, so let's look at the deflection. And 1.66, so we get pretty much the same value. Let me change this thing to, uh, Average ISO and change the rendering to material shading. And there we are. Okay. Now we you 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 know how to get the, the stresses ply by ply, and we have done so many of it, so many of these in the last 30 videos that I'm not gonna do you because you know all the hooks, all the uh, all the all, all, all the tips, and you can go ahead and ply uh, plot the different plies. Let's uh, let's actually look at one of them, for example, the 
let's look at uh, the, the the core, the stress distribution in the core. Uh, so uh, let me remind you how that is done. So you go to static uh, static case, case solution, deactivate this thing, and then right click, generate image, stress, uh, full stress tensor. Okay, and uh, which why is this? Double click on this. This is uh, this is in the uh, in the top face. Okay, then you go to the bottom face or the middle face actually. You see the stresses are almost zero, very small. Okay, uh, well at least in C11. Maybe I should look at one Mises. Okay, let's look at the one Mises instead. So let's go to the top face. The stress is 194. Go to the core very small and go to the the bottom face again which is going to be pretty much the same cancel that now uh, what we want to do is now we want to go and change our ply material property for the core to honeycomb okay so you go back to the you go back to the uh, composite design double click here put you in the composite design go to the Second, uh, the second, uh, second ply, which was core S2D, okay. Uh, double click on it, and instead of for attribute, instead of core defined as 2D, we can say core defined as honeycomb. Remember, the difference is that in the honeycomb we needed to input three values, and I did, okay. And for the those three values were normal, normal modulus and two shear moduli. And for the 2D orthotropic, normal modulus was not even inputted, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> say fine. So this is changed now. Core defined, oops, did I change that? Yes, that's honeycomb. Uh, this name was a bad idea, so this name really is not as ortho anymore because I'm using honeycomb properties so ignore that 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 name okay now we're going to go back to uh, our uh, uh, generative structure analysis right there and all right and uh, look at the deflection very similar okay now the, the, there is there is some differences as far as the actual numbers but uh, uh let's check the uh let's check the uh stress okay uh and this was the let me see now which one was which double click on this and one mises we're looking at the one mises okay and which core which ply is it ply number one ply number two you see that uh keep in mind that uh, if you're using honeycomb as uh the core material when you plot the stresses in that core you get zero so uh, uh, you, 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 you can you can you can display the stresses in the uh, top face top face layer top face ply bottom face but uh, plate or face uh, bottom face ply but if you're using honeycomb as your, your material, uh, when you when you try to plot the stresses in that in that layer, uh, you will get uh, zero. Okay. All right. So uh, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, and also notice that the material properties of the uh, honeycomb uh, at core you could have defined it as uh, 3D orthotropic, but the results would be identical to the run if you had declared it as 2D orthotropic. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that's pretty much it.